This is 5 Minute Friday on the Chinchilla Scaling Laws. Back in episode number 670 on a model architecture called Llama, I talked about the Chinchilla Scaling Laws for the first time. And uh, so to give you some more context on this really important concept, the Chinchilla Scaling Laws come from research by Google DeepMind that was published in March 2022. So this research is about a year old, but you'll see by the end of the episode why it's super relevant to uh, to everything in machine learning today, uh, particularly with respect to large language models, like the kinds of models that we're seeing behind ChatGPT, GPT-4, and so on. So the idea with this chinchilla paper was that these DeepMind researchers wanted to find uh, how they could optimally uh, pre-train a large language model for a broad range of natural language generation tasks given a fixed compute budget. So in order to do this experiment, it's a massive experiment, they trained 400 different transformer architectures. So uh, transformers are the uh, deep learning uh, model structure that we build up into a large language model. And so uh, they trained 400 of these transformer architectures, so effectively 400 of these uh, large language models, and they varied the size of these models quite a bit. So they had uh, models as small as 70 million parameters, which is still pretty large, um, but they ranged up to 16 billion parameters. Uh, And then in addition to ranging the parameter size from 70 million up to 16 billion parameters, they also ranged the token size. So uh, the number of parts of words, you can hear all about this concept of tokenization from words into subwords in episode number 626, but you can just think of it as kind of like a word uh, for our purposes today. And so um, these DeepMind authors, they worked with uh, data set sizes ranging from 5 billion tokens up to 500 billion tokens. So overall, these 400 different training situations, and in so doing, they determined that the compute optimal ratio of model size to number of tokens, natural language tokens that you train on, is 20 to one. So 20 tokens for every parameter that you have in your model. So this means that if you wanna train a large language model with a billion model parameters, then you're going to want to have about 20 billion tokens in your natural language training data set to train that. Um, So this means that given that fixed 20 to 1 ratio at any size, uh, any model size, this means that if we double our model size, then we need to double our data set size. So if we double our model size from uh, 1 billion parameters to 2 billion parameters, then we're going to need to double our ideal um, size of our training data set from 20 billion tokens to 40 billion tokens. So hopefully that um, is crystal clear. So the reason why these are called the chinchilla scaling laws is because based on the laws that I just expounded for you, the DeepMind researchers in the same paper, uh, which of course I've linked to in the show notes, they created a model that they called chinchilla and so it had 70 billion model parameters. And the reason why it was called Chinchilla is because they were using it to compare against a model called Gopher that already existed that had 280 billion model parameters. So at 280 billion model parameters, Gopher was four times the model size, but it was only trained on a quarter of the data that the Chinchilla authors did. So the Chinchilla authors used what they learned from their enormous experiment over these 400 different training situations. um, And then they scaled up the scaling law that they determined to a a really big large language model, 70 billion parameter model. um, And when they trained it according to their scaling laws, it had four times the data of Gover, but it was only a quarter of the model size. So this was compute optimal training And the important thing about this compute optimal training is that they were able to, for the same price as was as the cost of training Gopher, they were able to uniformly defeat it across every uh, performance task 
that they uh, trained it. So there's there's these benchmark natural language um, tasks, which you can read about more in the paper. But across all of these tasks, Chinchilla crushed Gopher despite being a quarter of the size and costing the same amount to train. And remember that this paper is uh, just a little over a year old. And at the time, they also compared Chinchilla to the other state-of-the-art models like GPT-3 and Megatron. And these models are also many times larger than Chinchilla, but Chinchilla still performed better because of this key uh, thing about having way more training data um, relative to the model size. So again, that 20 to 1 token to parameter ratio um, that defines the chinchilla scaling law in a nutshell. Um, so the this has important real-world implications as well because not only does this mean that um, you have this um, this rule of thumb for how much training your data how much training data you're going to want to optimally train a model of a given size, it also means that actually models don't need to be, be as big as we might have thought. So this means that um, a model like Chinchilla, because it has only 70 billion parameters relative to Gopher's 280 billion or GPT-3's 180 billion, Chinchilla is cheaper to fine tune on your own proprietary task and it's also cheaper to use uh, at inference time. So uh, this broadens the range of viable applications and commercial applications that you can use models for. Now, getting to the new news, because <laughs> everything that I've just told you is your old news, but it's really important today because on March 28th, a company called Cerebras released a family of models called Cerebras GPT. Like Dolly 2.0 and GPT-4 all J, which I covered um, in uh, episode number 672 a fortnight ago. Um, in, in that episode, I detailed these other open source architectures that, so Cerebrus GPT, as well as Dolly 2.0, GPT-4LJ, and no doubt many more uh, model architectures, open source model architectures that are coming out right now for doing natural language generation tasks. Um, like those, Cerebrus GPT has an open source model architecture, it has open source training data, it has open source model weights, and it has a commercial use friendly Apache 2.0 license. So that's really key, especially when you compare with um, other well-known uh, relatively small LLMs today, single GPU LLMs um, like um, Llama and Alpaca, which I talk about also in uh, that episode two weeks ago, number 672, and of course the Llama episode in episode number 670. So the key thing here is that with these newly released wholly open source models with their permissive commercial use friendly licenses, you can now take those model architectures and fine tune them to your own particular proprietary data, which could be specific to some particular proprietary natural language generation task that you would like to be able to perform, um, perhaps for yourself or for users of a platform that you've developed, a software platform. The key thing here that's new about the Cerebras GPT release is that the models that they released follow these chinchilla scaling laws. So this means that they varied the data set size. So uh, Cerebras released seven models. All of these are available in Hugging Face and I provided a link to that. Um, so you can easily import these into your Python code in just a line of code. And so these seven models are in Hugging Face and they range from 111 million parameters up to 13 billion parameters. So that 13 billion size, that's starting to get to be about as big of a model as you can fit on a single large GPU. And that's comparable to the size of Llama and Alpaca that I've already talked about. And so that kind of size around 13 billion is gonna be your best shot for fine tuning a model to have the breadth of capabilities of something like ChatGPT. And if you're looking for a relatively inexpensive way to do that kind of training efficiently, you can check out my episode last week on parameter efficient fine tuning. Um, so that's episode number 674. So if you wanna be getting near chat GPT quality performance, you're gonna to wanna to use one of these big new Cerebrus GPT models. Um, if you wanna experiment with smaller large language models, um, which you could very easily fit onto a single GPU for training, uh, and then you would be able to deploy very efficiently into production, maybe even deploy for use on edge devices like phones, 
um, it, there's, because these models go down to as small as just 111 uh, million parameters. Um, so with these smaller models from Cerebrus GPT, you can experiment with um, having these models perform on a narrower range of domain-specific natural language generation tasks um, that might be important to you. So you have this trade-off that you can now play with with these seven models from Cerebrus GPT, varying in sizes from 111 million model parameters up to 13 billion model parameters. And you can have the peace of mind that because they train them following these scaling laws, you're getting a compute optimal uh, model to fine tune. Um, so yeah, really clever uh, new thing from Cerebrus GPT, varying the data set size at that 20 to one ratio that we learned from the chinchilla training laws. Um, for their seven different models. And it sounds like they might uh, potentially in the future also release uh, models that are much bigger than the 13 billion. Um, those could be in the works. Um, so this has an interesting implication. <laughs> and uh, I read about this in a blog post, um, which I'll also provide to you in the show notes called um, AI Brick Wall. And so um, the idea of this is that if we follow these chinchilla scaling laws, um, as, our, as our current dense transformer-based large language model approaches, if, as we keep trying to scale them up, there's this practical limit because of cost implications. Because if we wanted to train a 10 trillion parameter model, according to the, to the chinchilla scaling laws, there would be a $30 billion cost associated with training that, um, which is wild. And so there's probably this prohibitive cost associated with training a model that large. Um, and in addition to that, um, because we want to have this 20 to 1 training data to uh, model size ratio, it probably means that it's completely impractical for there to be that much training data out there. Um, I think it's far beyond the amount of training data, non-synthetic training data that would be available for training such an enormous model um, compute efficiently according to these chinchilla scaling laws. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed another five minute Friday digging into large language models and how you can be making using small open source versions. Um, now we've talked about even smaller ones than ever before in today's episode. They're compute efficient as of today's episode. And I provided you last week with approaches for parameter efficient fine tuning for getting these uh, relatively small LLMs tuned to a task that is of most interest to you. So hopefully super valuable for you get your uh, brain cells flowing on how you can be applying these kinds of new techniques, these amazing new open source models for a huge range of natural language generation tasks, generative AI tasks uh, for you and for your users. All right, that's it for today. Until next time, keep on rocking it out there, folks. And I'm looking forward to enjoying another round of the Super Data Science Podcast with you very soon. <laughs>